Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a PS2 game, and that happens to be Chain Dive. So the game was developed by Alveon and published by Sony Computer Entertainment, and it was released in 2003 and only in Japan. But one thing that is interesting about its release date is that, yeah, even though it is only released in Japan, a part of it actually did wound up in North America and Europe, and you're probably wondering how the fuck did that happen. So a part of the game end up being on a PlayStation Magazine demo disc, and to be exact, it's the official PlayStation Magazine Volume 79. So if you happen to have this demo disc and you have played this game on there, then you probably wondered where the hell did the game go. Well now we all know that it all stayed in Japan. Yay. Damn it, Sony. So this game is considered as a side-scrolling hack and slash. At least that's the closest thing I can come up with, or a 2.5D platformer. Either way, it works. Now first things first, as you would suspect, I'd be talking about the game's story, but because this game is only released in Japan and there's no, like, English text at all, then I kinda have a hard time knowing what the hell's going on, but from what I've looked up, so apparently the character that you're playing as is named Shark. And he's just saving a bunch of people on a world that's getting infected by a bunch of uh, weird bug looking things. And yeah, that's really all there is to know about the story of what I got. But that's okay, I wasn't really expecting this game to be very story driven. But if it is, well, we'll probably never know unless you can read this shit. But in the meantime, you can just take it or leave it. So for now, let's start talking about the gameplay. So it's a side-scroller where you have a bunch of enemies always swarming around you, but whenever you use your sword on them, it doesn't kill them, it just freezes them. It's almost like your sword is made out of liquid hydrogen. But how you actually defeat the enemies in this game is that you gotta freeze them first, and then you gotta use your chain weapon where you dive right into the enemies, and the bigger chain of uh, enemies that you kill, the more health you do gain back. In certain aspects, it kind of reminds me of Klonoa, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, regenerating your health by using more uh, bigger chains is very useful, considering that you also do have an attack that can uh, make an explosion where it does blow up everything on the screen, but doing that does lower your health by quite a lot, so you don't want to use it too much. And the way how you get around throughout the game is by jumping and also by using those green orbs that you see around by using your chain to grapple onto them and by swinging around. But your main objective for these levels are always going to be different, where sometimes it is going to be very simple where you just got to go from point A to point B. But other times it is going to be very mission based where you either got to protect something from being destroyed from the enemies. But sometimes you will get some special missions that do play very differently. For an example, there's this one stage where you get chased by a giant monster when you got to avoid its attacks. And there are some boss stages, of course. So this game does have some variety within its levels, but other than the story mode, there is a training mode, which of course, as you would suspect, you do have a tutorial level, and then a free mode, which allows you to just fling yourself around and just do whatever the fuck you want. So with that said, even though this game is only released in Japan and doesn't have any English, it is a very easy to understand game. Now even the missions that are not as straightforward, such examples being like the one where you gotta defend a bunch of helicopters from being attacked, at first I was a little confused, but then after halfway through I finally figured it out, so it's not entirely impossible. And I guess if you think about it, this game is pretty much the combination of Klonoa, Donkey Kong Country, and Metal Gear Rising. Well, not really Metal Gear Rising, but at least has that look to it. So now, let's start taking a look at the game's controls. And I think they are very good, very responsive, and I really don't have much complaints about them whatsoever. So X is the jump, square is to attack, triangle is for the explosion attack, and R2 is for the grappling chain. So there's not a whole lot of buttons that you need to memorize, but at least the ones that are there are very simple and easy to understand. And they do feel really good for this style of game. I guess the only complaint I can make with the game is that the swinging mechanic does work a little bit differently than I was expecting, but otherwise though, it is very easy to get used to. But maybe it's because I'm just too used to Donkey Kong Country swinging. But yeah, the controls in this game are very good. So now, let's get moving on to the other things, like the graphics. And the graphics for this game are very nice looking. So it has a very futuristic sci-fi setting, and like I said earlier, it does remind me a little bit of Metal Gear Rising. 
but I suppose in this case, I should say that it looks a little bit more like Nano Breaker on PS2. But anyways, I do like the way how the game looks, I also do like the character designs of the game, I think they look really cool. And there's a couple of monster designs that are pretty interesting looking, although there's a few that are a little bit bland looking, but nothing too major. But for 2003, this is a damn good looking game. Now as for the game's music, the music is actually pretty awesome. In fact, if the music reminds me of anything, it sort of reminds me of uh, Piano 3 on the GameCube. And don't you love it when like the first stage music of the game is like one of the best songs of the game? Yeah, gotta love that. So yeah, it's very trance, very techno, and I think it suits the game really well. In fact, the composer that did the music for this game also did do the music within Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Of course, I'm talking about the one in 1990. So knowing this, yeah, the music in this game is really good, not only for that it suits the game really well, but I also just do really like it. And this is coming from someone that's not the biggest techno fan. I mean, yeah, there is quite a few techno tracks in video games that I do really like, but it's not really my go-to type of genre. But this one is very good, very solid stuff. So now, if you wanted to go out and buy this game, now like I said, this is a Japanese-only PS2 game, so you have to have a way to play Japanese PS2 games, whether you have a Japanese PS2 or if you have a way to modify it. So that is something to keep in mind if you do want to actually own the game. So, as for the general prices, the cheapest I've seen it for was $25, and the highest I've seen it for was $45. Well, that's not too terrible, considering that this game is only released in Japan, and it's also not one that you're ever going to see around your area unless, you know, someone just happened to import it previously. But it is at least somewhat affordable and not, like, outrageously expensive, so that's good. But if you do want to play the game on emulation, the game does run pretty good, except for one issue. So the only issue I ran into with this game on the emulator is that the game does drop a little bit of frames. Now I know some people might lose their shit over this because you know, oh my god it's not 60 frames per second. But even with this game having frame rate drops a little bit, it didn't interfere with the gameplay. It didn't drop to a point where it made the game unplayable. It was just a noticeable change, but it didn't interfere with anything because I was still enjoying the game a hell of a lot. So yes, if you do want to emulate this one, that is something to keep in mind, so maybe you might have to tinker around with some settings to make it, like, run a bit better, but either way, even with these little frame rate drops that will happen every now and then, it still never annoyed me at all. I mean, it's nothing compared to Drakengard 3's frame rate. So now, as for my overall thoughts on Chain Dive, is that this game is pretty fucking awesome. I was actually surprised how good this game actually was. So it is a pretty easy to pick up and play sort of game, even with the variety of missions that are not as straightforward. But using that freeze attack and diving yourself into them and making big combos is just very satisfying. And having a variety of missions is also good too. I guess my only real complaint with this is that the game isn't really that long of a game, and there's not a whole lot of stuff you get to do after you complete the game, but other than that though, the game is at least very enjoyable for what it is. But it only makes me question, why the hell did Sony not release this to the West? Did they think this game wouldn't sell? What a shame. Well, as unfortunate as it is that we never got it over here, I'm at least glad that I was at least able to play it. And I would definitely recommend this game. I do think the game is at least worth trying out for that it is a pretty unique idea, even though it is a lot like Klonoa if you fuse it together with Donkey Kong Country and Nano Breaker, I guess. But either way, I was pleasantly surprised by this, so yeah, check this game out if you can, any way you can. So with that being said, I'm gonna end this review right here, so thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.